prostate disease. We discussed that earlier on. So benign prostate hypertrophy, or BPH for short, um, as I said, is usually very much influenced by testosterone. When that happens, you castrate the little doggy. Um, then once the testosterone level drops, that just goes away on its own. Okay, and just there'll be some pictures continue to and uh, I'll explain to you why is it important to sort of treat this condition in the first place seeing the word is benign prostate cancer like I said it's a uh, one of the luck of draw already part genetic part environmental part breed part species part um, hereditary lines uh, part um, sort of uh, influence from the testicles so coming back to this diagram so this is the prostate over here okay so you can see that it is very, very closely linked to the bladder and the urethra. It wraps around the urethra. Okay, so what's the prostate for? We just remind ourselves, so basically it produces, so when a dog ejaculates, okay, the first one third is the preseminal fluid. The next third is the semen, the sperm itself. And the last bit is the prostate um, fluid to nourish the semen. So that is the function of it. Okay, so that's why it's very, very closely related to the whole, uh, the whole reproductive system, so to speak. Yeah, happy with that? Because the anatomy of it is important, the location of it uh, would make sense in a bit. So, when we get a large prostate, okay, you can see that it is enlarged over here, and that's how big it is. One of the biggest problem is that due to the location of the prostate and the colon, the rectum is here and the colon is here, the large intestine, a large prostate would push up to the large intestine. So when the dog is pushing up poop, defecating, it will come in a little ribbon because it is actually coming up from a much narrower hole, so to speak, because it's being squeezed out. Okay, and that is that is why dogs they take and there is sometimes it's not unusual for them, it's a huge accumulation of poop behind here, just because they got strained so much to get it through over the prostate into the outside world. Okay? And hence when we see x-rays like this, whereby you have this huge prostate when when it's supposed to be that size, then we get a little bit concerned. Okay? And uh, for just a brief um, sort of understanding of x-rays. So air is black, bone is white. Everything else is gray in between. The reason why bone is white is because it's calcified. Yeah, happy that heavy metal. So metals will be, metal will be white as well. Okay, then the reason why you see the bone is white is because of calcium. Okay, the, and it comes to the significance in a bit. So this is what we talk about. That's a colon. Usually, the diameter would be the same over here all the way out. But because of this huge prostate, you can see how it squeezes the colon. So there's only a little bit of tunnel left. You get all this feces accumulation behind here. And it just takes much harder to push out and push out very, very little strips of poop because of the prostate here. Yeah. And that is why, uh, and that is also Randomly, that's a very, very good diagram because that is how we sort of diagnose prostate issues. Okay, let's finger up the bum and feel for it because we sort of know what a normal sized prostate should feel like. But when you feel over there, it's huge and you're trying to get your fingers around there, then that is where we say that mm, this prostate feels a bit enlarged and coupled with all the other uh, evidence of clinical history of the dog is trying to poop, coming out ribbon like feces and all this sort of thing. It's entire, so all this sort of thing gets the picture clearer and clearer that probably it's a prostate problem. Yeah. Okay, so ultrasound. For ultrasound, it's very interesting. So it doesn't go through air, it doesn't go through bone. Okay, fluid is black. Everything else is all 50 shades of grey. Okay, so this is the prostate. So there shouldn't, there shouldn't be any fluid in the prostate. It should be a nice solid organ, just like your, uh, just like your pancreas, like your spleen. Okay, if you get fluid inside there, it's a question of whether it's a prosthetic cyst, a prosthetic abscess, or something is wrong with the architecture. It's just abnormal, so to speak. Okay, so in this case, this one was a prosthetic cyst. Same again, increased risk of prosthetic cyst from uncastrated males because of the influence of testosterone. 
So prostate disease. So a normal prostate, bladder normal prostate, colon, where the poop goes through, and large. So it's just to illustrate a little bit clearer in the diagram. What does an enlarged prostate actually clinically mean to the animal? Yep. Okay, so this is okay, hard to say, hard to see because so basically what we are seeing over here it is a intense whiteness, almost like bone. Okay, and remember I was saying that the reason why bone is white is because of calcium. Okay, there shouldn't really, really be any reason for calcium here unless it's a particular cancer called carcinoma and it produces calcium. Okay, and that is where the prostate is. So that is why I was like, okay, that's abnormal. Why is there calcium there? And it usually is a carcinoma. Yeah. So when we look at prostate, because most prostate uh, cancer is malignant, the definition of malignant is it spreads. Benign is it doesn't spread. Okay, so malignant is spread. So we always do a chest x-ray before we even think about doing any further surgery. Okay, if, uh, if anybody is thinking of wanting to remove the prostate or drain the prostate or considering whether it's just a BPH or a prostate cancer or whether it's just a prosthetic cyst or with some form of surgery, so you always check the chest first. Okay, because as you can see on the chest, you see all these little round circles. Okay, that's all abnormal. Basically, that is just tumor spread. The chest, as I said, air is black, bone is white. So the chest should be nice and black with our lungs. Okay, once you get all these big circles, there shouldn't be any circles like, like, like all these circles, there's no normal structure, there should be all those circles. Yeah, and hence, uh, I know you have not, you, you, you may not see the normal chest, but take my word for it. There, it. there shouldn't be any normal, there shouldn't be any circles that size, like grapes, in the chest. Yeah, so, and that is spread, basically. Another place that we look for spread is up in the lumbar spine, over here. So whenever we talk about either edo gland carcinoma or uh, prosthetic sort of uh, carcinomas, we will look for spread up here. Okay, we take an X-ray as well. Okay, um, you may see the little extra bony prominence over there. Okay, so same again, carcinoma, calcium. That's what we look for spread. So this is where the black arrows are pointing to the fluffiness of the bone. The white arrows are pointing to the enlarged lymph nodes where the spread is. So there's a lumbar spine, so there's a thigh, there's a femur. And this is pointing to the prostate that's enlarged. So we always look for spread there. That's how we know what the prognosis is. <coughs> what shall we do next? And this is what a tumour looks like. So, uh, so basically, if you sort of uh, think of it, um, if you know sort of basic cell, a cell should have a nucleus inside there. Anything different is abnormal. So you can see this cell here, a single cell with three, four nucleus inside there. So that's cancer already, <coughs> basically. It's just abnormal growth of cells. And you can see this bad boy here, the cluster over there, and this big nucleus. It's just abnormal. It's just not uniform. It's just a very abnormal looking cell. So all this all sort of uh, cancer. That was very boring, wasn't it? All this cancer stuff. Ugh. Okay, testicular tumor. Two percent, remember. Okay. So, um, how often do we get there? So, usually there are three different sort of testicular tumor that can occur okay so you have your Leydig cell or interstitial cell tumor okay, which is the most benign and you have your seminoma and you have your Sertoli cell tumor which is the most malignant okay so just a reminder the difference between malignant and benign benign means uh, they don't really spread so much malignant means they spread okay it doesn't tell you about the size a benign mass can still be this big a malignant mass can be that big or just microscopic okay so the definition between malignant and benign is the ability to spread that's it Yep, okay. So I've seen dogs with huge testicular tumor. You take it out, it's benign. It's good. Tumor out, and I'm sorry. Or little ones, horrible tumors spread to the chest, spread to everything. So different ball game, literally. Um, yeah. So what is interesting is that the 
the most malignant one, okay, so this, uh, this uh, is not uncommon for them to be found inside the abdomen uh, as the undescended testicle, as we discussed earlier on, okay. And what's interesting about it is that they actually produces quite a lot of estrogen. So 50% of them produces extra estrogen, not, te not testosterone, but extra estrogen. So you get the uh, feminization traits that you can see in an animal. So like uh, enlarged nipples, um, and uh, sometimes, sometimes in rare occasions, even milk, so to speak. So uh, that's because there's a lot of estrogen being produced. And usually, without something random, the more estrogen produced there is, the more feminization there is, it usually is more malignant. And a very, very ballpark. Uh, that's in my experience that, 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 that we see. So um, tumors, testicles, when it happens, that 2% when it happens, higher if it's in the abdomen, Okay, are uh, certainly worth investigating because they can be malignant, they can be benign. So it's uh, good to know. So they can look something like this. And this, by the way, is benign. So take away the testicle, and I'm sorry. So everything was much better after that. Uh, it can be like this, one big, one small. So a very typical, obvious one. So these both descended testicles, but one has obviously uh, become uh, different. So that is why for entire dogs, and uh, I would be checking the testicles every single time to make sure they're still the same size. And I say, okay, okay for this year, I'll check you next year again, so to speak, or six months, or however the check is. Um, and take it out. And in this case, the, the testicle has become a tumor. So in this case, the bigger one is actually the abnormal one, and this is the normal one, okay? If I were to do a cryptorchid castration, it is not <laughs> unusual for this to be the normal one, and the one that's in the abdomen to be much, much smaller because they don't develop as fast. So it just depends. Uh, 